Hi guys and welcome to my channel. In this particular video, I will be discussing what is SPF or sender policy framework. In this particular video, I will be discussing how SPF record works and how SPF record helps organizations to stop spoofing and spam emails. If we go by definition for SPF record, an SPF record helps an organization from receiving spoof or phishing emails. But the question arises, how does SPF do it? Let's assume that we have two different organizations, abc.com and xyz.com. One of the users from abc.com, bob at abc.com, wants to send email to a user in xyz.com. So bob at abc.com will compose an email and will type the email address of john at xyz.com and will send that email from his email application. Now, as soon as this email will be sent from bob at abc.com email application, that email will be processed by one of the email servers within abc.com organization. And during that process, few attributes will be added within the email header of that email. For example, connecting IP address, from address, to address, and return path. Where connecting IP address will be the IP address of the sender's email server, which is going to process that particular email. And the return path will be bob at abc.com. Return path is the email address to which an NDR or bounce back message will be sent in case the email is not delivered to the recipient. So now this email will be sent to john at xyz.com and it will be processed by the email server of xyz.com organization. Recipient server will try to find if this particular email is a legitimate email or not. But the question is how recipient server will trust this email if the sender of the email is the actual owner of abc.com domain or how recipient server will verify if the IP address 1.2.3.4 is the IP address of the sender's email address. Let's consider one more example. Let's assume that we have two organizations, abc.com and xyz.com. Now someone who does not belong to abc.com or xyz.com organization is trying to send an email using abc.com domain. He will use bob at abc.com email address and will send that email to john at xyz.com. Now this email will not be processed by the mail server of abc.com because this email is not sent from the mailbox of bob at abc.com. So this email will be processed by a random server. And during that process, few attributes will be added within the email header. The connecting IP address will be the IP address of this random email server, which is going to process this email. And the return path will be the email address of the guy who is going to send this email using abc.com domain. So when recipient server will receive this email, that server will try to find or will try to validate if this particular email is a valid email or not. But how recipient server will come to know if the connecting IP address 12.12.12.12 belong to abc.com organization? Or how recipient server will verify if this particular email was actually sent from bob at abc.com? So now let's understand how SPF record will help the recipient servers to identify if the email is a legitimate email or it is sent by somebody who does not belong to that particular domain. So now we will see how things will change when SPF record comes in the picture. Let's assume that abc.com organization has now added an SPF record for their domain in public DNS. And the IP address of their email server is added within the SPF record. Now bob at abc.com will send another email to john at xyz.com. And when this email will be sent, it will be processed by one of the email servers of abc.com. And during that process, few attributes will be added within the email header. For example, connecting IP, which will be the IP address of the email server of abc.com. 
and the return path will be bob at abc.com. When this email will be sent to the recipient server of xyz.com organization, that email server will try to find whether this email is a legitimate email or not, or whether this email is actually sent from abc.com domain or not. To validate whether this email is a legitimate email or not, the recipient server will check the return path and it will extract domain name from the return path. And then it will reach the public DNS of abc.com domain. The recipient server will query the public DNS that do you have SPF TXT record for abc.com domain? Public DNS will show the SPF record for abc.com domain and the recipient server will check if the connecting IP address is added within the SPF record or not. If the sending server's IP address will be found within the SPF record, SPF check will pass and the email will be delivered to john at xyz.com. And in case the sending server's IP address is not found within the SPF record, in that case, SPF check will fail. And the recipient server will treat this email as per the action specified within the spam filtering policies. So now if john at xyz.com will forward this email to an external user, in that case, SPF check will fail because SPF check will be done against xyz.com domain who has forwarded that email. This is one of the limitations in SPF record that it doesn't work or it gets fail when emails are forwarded to other users who are external. There are lots of scenarios where SPF record is used to stop spoofing and domain impersonation. Let's consider one more example and things will be more clear. Let's assume we have an organization abc.com and this organization has an application that send emails to external users or to external domains. And this application uses one of the user accounts email address of abc.com and it sends emails using that particular email address. When this application will send an email to recipient, the recipient server will check the connecting IP address and the return path within the email address. Then recipient server will query the public DNS for SPF record for abc.com domain. If the SPF record does not has the IP address of the application, in that case, SPF will fail and that email will be marked as spam by recipient filter and the category of that particular email will be spoof. To overcome this situation, what sender can do, he can add the IP address of the relay application within the SPF record of abc.com domain so that the recipient servers can trust that particular email. Once you add IP address of the relay applications within SPF record, all the recipient servers will treat that email as a legitimate email and they will trust that this particular email is sent from abc.com domain. Now let's understand how we create SPF record and then I will be showing you how we can add SPF record for our custom domains. In Office 365, SPF record value will always be v equal SPF1 include spf.protection.outlook.com hyphen all. An SPF record has three components version, SPF value, and enforcement rule. Version specifies the version of SPF record. An SPF record will always start with this particular value, V equal SPF1. SPF value defines the IP address or the domain name for which you are adding the SPF record. In this example, spf.protection.outlook.com indicates that the domain for which you are adding SPF record is added within an Office 365 tenant. If you want to add an IP address in SPF record, then value will be v equal SPF1, IP4, and then you will be specifying the IP address of your application or the server. And then you will be typing include spf.protection.outlook.com. 
So in this particular SPF record, IP address is the IP of your email server or an application. And spf.protection.outlook.com indicates that the domain for which you are adding this SPF record, that domain is verified in Office 365 tenant. Enforcement rule is of three types, hard fail, soft fail, and neutral. Hard fail enforcement rule indicates that I have only one server from where my users will be sending the emails and that server name or IP address is added within the SPF record. Soft fill is used when we are not sure how many email servers we have in our organization. That means I'm not sure that from which server my users can send emails and I haven't added all the servers or the IP addresses of all the servers within our SPF record. Neutral is reserved for testing purposes. This type of enforcement rule is not used in the production environments. To add an SPF record, you need to update a TXT record within the DNS management of your public DNS. This particular domain, office365concepts.com, is purchased from GoDaddy. So if you have purchased a domain from GoDaddy, the benefit is you don't have to add DNS records manually. As soon as you will add a domain in Office 365 tenant, all of the DNS records will automatically add within public DNS of GoDaddy portal. But for this demo, I have removed SPF record so that I can show you if you have to add it manually, so how it can be added. If I go back to the DNS management under Office 365 Admin Center for this domain, office365concepts.com, I can see that almost all of the records are already updated. But the TXT record, which is for SPF record, is not added yet because I have removed it manually. This will be the value for the SPF record. You can copy the value from here. And go to your public DNS and create a TXT record. So we will select TXT because the SPF record is a TXT type record. So here we will mention at, and then we will paste the value that we have copied from Office 365 portal. And then we will click save. When you will add this particular DNS record, or if you will add any particular DNS record, you will have to wait a couple of minutes so that it can be replicated. To verify if a particular DNS record has been updated or not, we can go to command prompt and here we can perform NSLOOKUP query. We will type NSLOOKUP set Q equal TXT and then we will type the domain name for which we are going to query this particular TXT record, which is office365concepts.com. So here we can see SPF record has been replicated. There is another way you can verify, which is MX Toolbox. From mxtoolbox.com, you can verify all the DNS records. You can check if particular DNS record has been replicated or not. So here we will type TXT and then we will type the domain name. So that will be TXT and the domain name. We will perform lookup. And here we can see SPF record has been published. Now let's recap what we have understood from this particular session. An SPF is a TXT record or a text record which is added within the public DNS of a particular domain. SPF record helps an organization from receiving spoof or phishing emails. SPF validates the sending server by verifying the IP address of the sender against the owner of that particular domain. SPF record increases domain reputation by stopping domain impersonation and email spoofing. SPF record is used to ensure that the recipient or the destination email servers will trust the emails which are sent from your organization. So in this particular session, we have discussed what is SPF record and how does it work. 
and how you can add an SPF record for your custom domains. In the next session, I will be discussing what is domain keys identified mail or DKIM. And I will be showing you practically how you can add DKIM record for your domains. So if you have learned something new from this particular video, please write in comments and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time. Take care.